Hey, Den of Geek fans, Aaron Sager is here, joined by the cast and creators of Third Eye, which is a sci-fi supernatural comedy written and performed by Felicia Day, right here on my left. Hello. And directed by actor and comedian Jonah Ray Rodriguez. Uh, hello, sir. Good to see you again. And also starring the vocal performing talents yes. of the excellent yes. London Hughes. Yes, hello, that's me. Who Hi. performs as... Sybil. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It will be available in October 2023 for all you folks out there. But let's talk about Third Eye. What is it all about? Felicia, talk about this story and sort of the inception of it. Where did it come from? So this is my baby. It was supposed to be my starring television role many, many years ago. It did not make it through Hollywood, but I had the opportunity to work with Audible and make it one of their originals. Um, and I did exactly, probably more of what I ever would have wanted had I done it for television because I did the story exactly the way I wanted it to. It's a 10 episode um, television show, essentially in audio. It's epic, it has amazing vocal cast, including London Hughes. We have Will Wheaton, who I wrote a part for. Um, we have Sean Astin, we have uh, Lily Pichu, and we also have, oh, the narrator um, is played by Neil Gaiman. So we have a cast of one of my, some of my favorite people. Uh, and also it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's my dream project. It's about a chosen one who failed. So, you know, very much close to my self-loathing heart. We're so used to the chosen, chosen one that of course saves the day. So the one that doesn't quite pass muster, I love it. Uh, Jonah, how'd you come into picture with this? Did it involve your guys' work on MST3K or? Yeah, we've been friends for a long time and we, we worked on that show. Um, and, you know, I've uh, ended up in a spot where I had to direct Felicia and some stuff. And so she had this project going on and she asked me to come on and I was very, very excited just because it's like a, I've never done any kind of audio sphere stuff. And that was like really exciting to me. Like there's something very nice about it. it's her project. This is all Felicia's world. This is her thing, um, and it was like my favorite kind of position to be in is just helping her in any in any way she needed and just facilitate trying to make it as best it could be. And, that's, and he yeah. did. I mean, I think having him his visual experience. You know, he has directed me on other things, and having that visual experience really made this uh, feel a lot more lively and visceral and very cinematic. And we wanted people to be in it um, in a way that's uh, you know pretty unique to the audio format. Hopefully, and I think my. <laughs> My, my probably my greatest contribution as a director, not to toot my own horn, was uh, toot casting London Hughes. Okay, <laughs> that's true. Okay, so I basically had cast people I know in all the parts or wrote parts for them, except for Sybil, who was my best friend. And I wrote this character who is my favorite character ever. In fact, early in the development, people were like, Sybil's too interesting. We need to tone her down. And I did for television and then that didn't work. And thank God I brought it all back. She's so funny. She brings this character to life in a way that she's a scene stealer in the best possible way. And she is like my dream. She's my dream. Thank you, well, Felicia. Let's, yeah, let's get into that a little bit more. Let's first talk about the character of Laura. And and by the way, it all everything you just said, it does feel that first chapter, it feels like you are watching, except listening to a TV show. Yes. Um, Laurel, in a way, very much connects to your previous work. We have this kind of fantasy element, but she's also quite different. So yeah. how is Laurel more than just a failed chosen one? Um, you know, uh, for, with her character, I wanted to explore something really personal for me. That is like the failed prodigy. And I was a violinist very young. I started playing when I was two. I got a scholarship to college. I also was kind of a prodigy on the internet, if you'll remember. Um, when I first started out, I was way ahead of everybody. But then you have this sort of um, false sense of needing to be ahead and, and be that prodigy over and over again. And you can never sustain that. And there is actually a prodigy syndrome where people feel they can't get over being successful early in their career and not being able to recapture that over and over again. And I really wanted to uh, embody that in this character and it worked perfectly with kind of deconstructing this chosen one thing. I know that was a super intellectual explanation. We have no, a lot of fart perfect. jokes. It was you know? perfect. <laughs> no. It's a very funny thing, but also there's, uh, I want to put some depth in there, uh, especially like I love fantasy. I love uh, the tropes of all of that, but I wanted to get under it and really ground it in reality in a way we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And then there's the character of Sybil, played yes. by the inimitable <laughs> yes. London, the, the uncomparable, yes, there we go. unmatched go London Hughes. Yeah. Uh, Me. If, uh, she is such a great such actor a great and actress character. And, char and, and single. I, I feel like I need to know yes. a little bit more about Sybil, of course. played by the excellent Amazing. London Hughes. Yes. Tell me about Sybil. Well, 
let me start from the beginning. Um, Sybil's a fairy and she's a hot mess. <laughs> she's mess. wild, she's funny, she's basically me. I didn't have to act to do this role. I don't know if you're aware of this. I read it and I was just like, it's me. It is her. Literally, it's really her. What, what acting do I have to do? It's like the perfect casting that is completely coincidental. I was like, it was the one character we didn't have an archetype for. I was like, well, this is who I need. And he was like, and I watched 15 seconds of her stand up and I was like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. She's kind of like a hot mess fae, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. She's just like, she's so in love with herself. She's so sure of herself. She's sneaky. She's she's funny. She's yeah. in your face. She's loud. She's She takes no prisoners, but she's also a loyal friend. Yeah, and she is. she's got a deeper story behind and her backstory is so sweet. And I could really resonate with that too because I'm very deep. And uh, she's, She's just such a fun character to and play. And she has a love story. Like and a whole, oh, I got oh, to right. date Will Wheaton. So me and Will Wheaton are in a relationship. It's PG-13, but me and Will, we get steamy. You guys you guys pushed the boundaries a little bit in yeah. that first yeah. chapter. No, and do. I love it because I didn't know it was going to go in that direction. Yeah. So Felicia, <laughs> you said that this has been your baby for a long time. However, how has the story and the character of Laurel kind of transformed or evolved a little bit since you did become a mom. You know, I wrote this, I wrote the pilot before I had a child. Sorry. <clears throat> I did the rest of the series, um, which is almost, I think, eight or nine hours worth of content. You guys are getting it. Yeah. Um, I wrote it after, and I really found it to be really important to have uh, that mentor relationship. So there's a, a girl, Kate, who comes in. She's a teenager, and she's played by Lily Pichu, who is absolutely incredible in this part. She's a hugely popular streamer, but her passion is voiceover, and it shows here. Um, and so that mentor relationship of somebody, oh, you know, like a teenager and somebody who's been through a lot, that was really important to me because often older women and younger women, like the w older women have to take a back seat in narrative. You know, the teenager comes in and basically move over all women because the teenager can only actualize themselves because of other women moving out of their way. And I think that's BS, okay? That's just a narrative that we have bought into and it's not true. And I, I think mentorship is really important between women and that's just kind of like a core. And also this relationship, yeah. you know? Like it really is, this is a lifelong relationship that has some issues we work through, but in the end, like we're- not in real life. Life in the show. Yeah, yeah. In, our, in real she life, she doesn't talk good. to me in real life. <laughs> <laughs> There's a restraining order right here. No. So obviously, this voice cast is just like jam packed with some great names. You got, of, of course, you guys. You've got uh, Sean Astin, Will Wheaton, Alan Tudyk, Lorraine yeah. Newman, yeah. And, Neil Gaiman, and Neil, yeah, Neil Gaiman, Gaiman yeah. as the narrator. You know all these folks. These are great people. They're also very busy people. How do you approach these people that are your friends, but are also so wrapped up in their own things? Is there? I, I mean, the great that thing like? is, yeah. I mean, you you email them and just uh, pray that they will make time for you. You know, <clears throat> I mean, the the thing about it is that with audio, it's a little bit less of an obligation. Like Joan and I have been working on this well over a year. Yeah. Um, and six months of that is just post-production because I think when you listen to it, you'll understand that this is intricate sound design. And like even the sound of Sybil's wings, we had to demo, we had to create. Yeah, sound out to Clamor and Mumble. Like they did so much in Audible. They did so much work on like doing revisions of what this portal sounds like because we really wanted it to be easy for people to understand what was going on. And I did my own stunts throughout yeah, everything. Exactly. So she didn't fly. I but, didn't fly, but yeah. I, I had to sound like I was <laughs> flying, which is very hard. What does that sound like? Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Because I'm in the sky. As I right, caught no. in a ceiling fan. So, that, ah! that was some good flying right Woo! there. Whoa. There we go. You're getting all this for L free, yeah. guys. Like, Literally. Yeah, this, this is a demo. This yeah. is bonus content yeah. right here. It's great. This is amazing. So basically, I asked my friends and if they'll show up, and they did. I mean, we have great ca cameos from Weird Al to Har Harvey yeah. Gann to, like, I mean, amazing cameos. So they'll just show up, and they said, Troy Baker, like, just yeah. send me some lines. And, like, it did it because I was, like... This is my baby. I'm, I'm going all out. I'm calling she in all really the favors. She really did. I'm so proud of her. Like when she was telling me the story of how long it took to get it to this stage, you know, when people have dreams and are like, I want this to happen. And then some people, you know, universe hands you a bad deal and you just give up. She never gave up. And now we're here. And I, I'm wrapping up. But Jonah, I am curious, just from the, the directing standpoint, was there any intimidating moment where you're like, OK, I have to now give notes to Neil Gaiman or I have to work with these people that I also really 
respect their work. And yeah, it was Neil Gaiman is the one that was like tricky for me because it's like it's that other thing too where it's like he knows Felicia, but then I'm like I'm also there. And there was a time where like I like gave him a, a note of like you know added a joke to one of his lines, and he was just like he was like oh yes that's funny, and then did it and nailed it, and I was just feeling great. And then a few you know uh, minutes goes by, I said oh try this line like this, and he goes no. No, that's not funny. That's not funny at all. And I was just like, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then I just brought back down to baseline. And, I think people are going to yeah. be really surprised that Neil is an amazing actor. I mean, you know, he's he. You're used to him as a narrator, but he's playing a character here, and he get as the as the episodes go on, he gets snarkier. Yeah. And, and a lot of that was him adding that personality to it, and like it's really funny it's where we layered, went with him, like, where he yeah. has like a thing where it's like he's a guy that's also a little upset that he has to keep reading the story. But he's also bit, yeah. invested in the story and wants to get yeah. to the end and like wants to like find out what happens. It's a, it's a really weird. He's very de so de self-deprecating. Some of yeah. it feels like it's just stream of conscience. Some of it was on the page. Some he added. It was really amazing. Final question: Since there is a lot of magic and sorcery and whatnot involved in Third Eye, if you were able to conduct a mundane spell, everyday life spell, what might it be for? I want to know. As soon as I meet a guy, whether he'll waste my time or not. So that's the spell. So like I'll meet a guy and I'll be like, I can see like how much he earns, if he's emotionally available, has he got any kids? Is he married? Like straight, like doo -doo -doo -doo. I was thinking more simple, but okay. No, yeah. Like so Like, yes, where does he holiday? Like, where does he vacation? Like, yes, is he the guy for me? What does he drive? Oh my god. Yeah, you would sign up for they have a lot of people signing up for that. Yeah. Uh, I just want to be able to go to sleep and it's instantly. Seriously? Oh wow. Um. I don't, I can't get to sleep. You know me, I'm neurotic. Did you not notice? Uh, I, I just, my mundane wish was that uh, we wrap up the interview. Oh, wrap them up. <laughs> Dang, man. No, I don't know. That's, that's Dang, like, you it's like, okay, here's the thing. In comedy, there's, it has to be a third beat. So if I just did another example of a mundane Yeah, they're comedians. Thing, we have to, and, yeah. We ha yeah, that was really funny. I did have a good time. I want the record to <laughs> show that I had a good time. We loved you. We love it. <laughs> this is great. Third Eye is available exclusively on Audible beginning October. October 5th, 2023, I am joined by director Jonah Ray Rodriguez. I am joined by the creator and a writer, and uh, she plays Laurel, Felicia Day. And then, oh yes, yes. the amazing, the, amazing. the incomparable, yes. the excellent, the stellar, yes. the cosmically Come grand, yes. the yes. I like London cosmically grand. Hughes, who plays yeah. Sybil. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs>